and Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Our Lord, the all of God. Even unto the God of my joy and gladness. Our help in the name of the Lord. Who hath made heaven and earth. I confess, Almighty God, the blessed Mary of the Virgin, the blessed Michael the Archangel, the blessed John Baptist, the Holy Apostle, the Holy Paul, all the saints in my brethren, that I have sinned exceedingly in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my own fault, by my own most grievous fault. Wherefore, I beg, blessed Mary of the Virgin, blessed Michael the Archangel, blessed John Baptist, the Holy Apostle, the Kingdom of all, all the angels and saints, and my brethren, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy upon thee, forgive thee thy sins, and bring thee to everlasting life. Amen. I confess to Almighty God, to Blessed Mary the Virgin, to Blessed Michael the Archangel, to Blessed John the Baptist, to the Holy Apostles Peter and Paul, to all the saints, and to thee, Father, that I have sinned exceedingly in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my own fault, by my own most grievous fault. Wherefore I beg, Blessed Mary the Virgin, Blessed Michael the Archangel, Blessed John the Baptist, the Holy Apostles Peter and Paul, all the angels and saints, and the Father, to pray for me to the Lord our God. Almighty God, have mercy upon me, forgive me thy sins, and bring me to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty, verse 4, grant the Lord's pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. Amen. For that I turn again, for the hands of God, that thy people may rejoice in thee, to us thy mercy, and grant us thy salvation. Prayer. Let my cry come unto thee. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom those secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, who may perfectly love thee, and work in thy name, Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Rest ye eternal, grant unto them all. And may light perpetual shine upon them. Thou, O God, art praised in Zion, and unto thee shall the vow be performed in Jerusalem. Thou that hearest the prayer, unto thee shall all flesh come. Rest the eternal grant unto them, O Lord, and may light perpetual shine upon them.
Spirit. O oh God, whose nature and property is ever to have mercy and to forgive, have compassion on the souls of thy servants and handmaids, and grant unto them the remission of all their sins, and being delivered from the bonds of this our mortal nature. They may be found worthy to pass into the everlasting life through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. In those days I, Daniel, was mourning, and I heard this word of the Lord. At that time shall arise Michael, the great prince who has charge of your people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never been since there was a nation till that time. And at that time your people shall be delivered. Everyone whose name shall be found written in the book. And many of those who fell asleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament, and those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Rest eternal grant to them, O Lord, and may thy perpetual shine upon them. The righteous shall be had in everlasting remembrance, they will not be afraid of any evil tidings. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brethren, in fact Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For as by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. But each in his own order, Christ the first fruits, and at his coming those who belong to Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Out of the deep have I called unto thee, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. O oh, let thine ears consider well the supplication of thy servant. If thou, O oh Lord, wilt be extreme to mark what is done amiss, the Lord, who may abide it. For to thee belongeth mercy and compassion. And for thy name's sake have I waited for thee, O oh God. Day of wrath and doom impending, David's word with his sibyls blending, heaven and earth in ashes ending. Oh, what fear man's bosom rendeth, when from heaven a judge descendeth. On whose sentence all dependeth, wondrous sound the trumpet ringeth, through her sepulchres it ringeth, all before the throne it ringeth. Death is struck and made. Waking, all creation is awaking to its charge and answer making. Lo, the book exactly worded, wherein all hath been recorded. Then shall judgment be awarded. 
when the judge is seated in earth, and each hidden deed arraigneth, nothing on a bench remaineth. What shall I, frail man, be pleading, who for me be interceding? When the just are mercy needing, King of majesty tremendous, Who does free salvation send us, Fount of pity then befriend us. Think I, Jesu, my salvation, Cause thy wondrous incarnation Leave me not to reprobation Faint and weary thou hast sought me On the cross of suffering bought me Shall such grace be vainly brought me Righteous judge for sin's pollution, grant thy gift of absolution, ere that day of retribution. Guilty now I pour my moaning, all my shame with anguish owning. Spare, O God, thy suppliant groaning. Through the sinful woman shriven, Through the dying thee forgiven, Thou to me a hope hast given. Worthless are my prayers and sighing, Yet, good Lord, in grace complying, Rescue me from fires undying. With thy sheep a place provide me, From the goats afar divide me, To thy right hand do thou guide me. When the wicked are confounded, Doomed to shame and woe unbounded, Call me with thy saints surrounded. Lo, I kneel with heart submission, See thy cash is my contrition. Help me in my last condition. Ah, that day of tears and mourning, From the dust of earth returning, Man for judgment must prepare me.
when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said to her, Do not weep. And he came and touched the bear, and the bear stood still. And he said, Young man, I say to you, arise. And the dead man sat up and began to speak, and he gave him to his mother. Fear seized them all, and they glorified God, saying, The great prophet has arisen among us, and God has visited his people. And this report concerning him spread through the whole of Judea and all the surrounding country. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise be to thee, thee, O Christ. Through that vessel. 
earthen vessel as it might have been, he still worked through that particular model to do the good things that, that person did in their lives. Even the painting that I want mom's wedding ring. I want this to belong to dad. I want this thing that not so and so wore. I want something to remember them. If things that were just around them or that they wore aren't important for us, how much more the body? Again, this applies even to those who do not believe in the resurrection. And it makes us have an understanding of where we are, even instinctually, by the fact that we are all children of God, as to how important the body truly is. As I said, the bodies of our, our departed loved ones and friends should be much more dear to us than stuff that they wore or that they owned. Funerals are important to us. Funerals, again, pagan societies, people who do not believe in our Lord Jesus Christ, they have tremendous rituals for the burial of their dead or even the cremation of their dead. In the Old Testament, people would actually, and still do to this day, dictate how they want to be buried, where they want to be buried, what they want their funeral to look like. Okay? We think that much about it today. Hey, I don't want to leave this up to chance, or I don't want to leave this to what my family, my father will tell you what I want. Heck, in the Old Testament, it was just where I was when I was going to be buried. St. Joseph, for instance, he told me he was died and buried in Egypt. He said, where do you want to be buried? Well, when we leave here, take my bones with you. <laughs> See, the transfer of your remains was something that was dictated. That was how important God lets us know that the body is. And for us, we understand that that is because of the resurrection of the body. This is why we take so much pains as Catholics to do right by the body. For many, 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 many years, cremation was not an option for Catholics. I think the church says it's okay, so I can't stand up here and say it's not. But if people want to ask me the question and talk about it, I do always point out the fact that throughout the scriptures, every time that a body is burned, that it is that is a sign of dishonor. Honorable dealings with the remains are always buried. Never once do we see anyone burned. If you really want to decide why you wouldn't burn it, you need it for animals to eat, literally. We shun that. It's scary to us to think about even our dead bodies being eaten by animals. I can't do a graveside service and not get there a little bit early and look into the grave and go, ooh. You look into that deep hole and you know that someday, someday, should the Lord tarry, that will be your home also. And it's a scary thing to think of these things. Because of that innate understanding of that separation from body and soul. But for us, there's that understanding of faith in the resurrection. So if we're all caught up on the material part of our being, our bodies, stuff, and this is everybody. How much more for us as Catholics to deal with the suffrages for the dead, praying for them. Most of your Protestant friends, unless they're high church Anglicans or whatever like that, they shun, they disdain this idea of praying for the dead. If the body and soul are separated, if you take so many pains and so much detail in dealing with the body, why would we ever conceive of not being attentive to the soul? The soul is the part that continues to live. That body is indeed an empty shell. It is still Uncle Bob or whoever. But the soul is the part of us that lives on. 
even if a body cannot be buried or buried where it wants to be for whatever, even providential reason, we can still honor the dead by praying, doing suffrages for the soul. If, what do you mean if the body can't be buried? How many, how many soldiers have been killed in warfare? Their bodies blown into nothings, burned, or the battle was raging so much, all she could do was dig a shallow grave and put them in there and go about her business. Where did you bury him? I can't remember. I was worried about getting killed myself. We just buried him and went off. And no one's any the wiser. If that can happen providentially, then what can we do for the dead? Suffer to for their soul. On this day of the year, on this very day, Mother Church undertakes the duty. Notice how it's the opportunity. She takes up the duty in a general commemoration for all who die in Christ, particularly in the Catholic fellowship, to be attentive to their souls, to pray for them. It was hard for me to fathom. It was really interesting that I, I used an example this afternoon about a lady who was in our parish and died a couple of years ago. That it's, I had never fathomed that you could actually live on this planet and not have anyone. Anyone. But he has had no one. We were it. This church was it for her. She had been married and childless. Her husband was gone. She was an only child. No cousins, no brothers, no sisters, both parents did. She had no one on the face of this planet who was a family member. Who is here now to pray for Edith if it is not her, not just her parish family, but the Catholic Church? Billions of brothers and sisters, billions in this day and age, probably less than that for you that really happens. If it's worth it every day. The billions of people praying for her. Because this is the day when the church commemorates generally those who are dead. It is a practice in this parish for this first week. The no November as a month is dedicated to the poor souls. Uh, the first week of November, the first eight days, the eighth day inclusive are particularly special days. It's the week of the dead. Masses should all be geared, if they can be, to the dead for our suffrages toward them. It's a practice in this parish that throughout that week, this list that we compile, we say specific names for family members and friends who have gone before us to ensure that their names are read on the altar of Christ. But on this day, we don't do that because this is the day when Mother Church does a general commemoration of all her faithful departed. The names aren't mentioned today. They will be because it is to the advantage of the dead that we offer suffrages for them. I pointed out before God, if we pay so much attention to bodies, how could we ever not think of being attentive to their souls that live on? It is the question as to whether it not it is to the advantage of that soul to have suffrages offered for them. There would have to be. If we pay that much attention to the body. How much more, as I said, can we pay attention to the soul? If we take that many pains to honor the soulless body that contains the soul, how can we ever think to do less for the soul? That is what today and this next week is for. The suffrages that we offer for the dead, particularly and first and foremost, the sacrifice of the altar, Offering before God that these souls may rest in peace. The sacrifice of the altar, to a lesser extent, our prayers collectively, our prayers individually, alms 
almsgiving for the dead. A lot of people miss out on that one. Corporal works of mercy for others with the intent that they are done for the dead. I always point out that the, the, the penitential rite that we do during the Mass, there are some who question as to whether, well, you, know, you do one penitential, why would you do another? Well, that's a liturgical discussion as to whether the first one is a penitential rite in the Mass. It's not historically. But when we have these days, to do a second penitential rite is the right thing to do because we should be spraying that penitential rite for a departed soul or souls that you can think of. They cannot pray for themselves anymore if they are in purgatory. They cannot pray for themselves. So when we pray that penitential rite, we should be praying it for them. That's what the church does. We pray for one another. Now in this world, if somebody was just so distraught they couldn't even pray, what would we do? We would pray for them. And we would know without doubt that the Lord would hear our prayers for that despondent person who couldn't pray for themselves. How much more the dead who cannot pray for themselves. That is our job. That is our, as I said before, as a church, our duty to do these things. Now this begs the question. And this is where your prize are going. Well, you don't know if it's going to benefit them. You're absolutely correct. I don't know. That's why I do it. I can stand here and tell you before the Blessed Sacrament, our Lord Jesus Christ, body, blood, soul, and divinity, that our suffrages and our prayers for certain souls are to no avail. But that doesn't make any difference. Not all benefit from our prayers, only those whose lives were lived, that they're prepared to benefit. Those who died in faith and obedience to our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, who do we know that may be? We don't. That's why we should pray for all of them. Well, I had this one relative that if I just know. How many people knew the thief on the cross and watched him hanging there railing on Jesus? Go, that guy doesn't even stop. He's being executed with somebody and he can yell at that guy. And they turned their backs and walked away thinking, man, he's going to roast in hell for all eternity. And our Lord Jesus Christ looked at him and said, Today you will be with me in paradise. What a surprise for those people who thought that he was a hopeless case. We don't know what happened in the last moments of someone's life. We have no idea. So we offer up our suffrages. If they are up to no benefit for that particular soul, our Blessed Mother will apply our suffrages to a soul that does need it. It's not like you're wasting your prayers or like you're wasting your almsgiving. That's why we put things like that in the hands of our Blessed Mother to intercede with her son to where he should probably properly be focused. So yeah, not all benefit, but many do. As I would point out, the angels in heaven rejoice over one sinner to come to repentance. So be it. Our prayers for the departed are not an aid to their salvation. It is appointed each to die once and then the judgment. When we die, we know what's going to happen. That's it. It's over. If someone's going to hell, you're not going to pray them out. Not going to happen. Our prayers and suffrages are not an aid to salvation, but they are our duty, as I said, to the humanity of the departed. Just the mere fact that we are true children of God in a creative sense, and that as long as there was breath in their lungs, whether we knew it or not, they had the opportunity of salvation. It is our duty to act as if our prayers will avail them for their salvation. As I said, it's not an aid to salvation, but those who are being saved and are in purgatory, they are in need 
it is necessary, it is our duty to pray for them. Because everything that we do for the dead, both their body and their souls, is a witness to our faith in the resurrection. We do not float around in heaven as disembodied souls for all eternity. The resurrection is of the body. I would highly suggest that you agree. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. The whole chapter is about the resurrection of the body. And the importance for us as Catholics to understand the resurrection of the body. It is that reason, the resurrection, as to why we do what we do for the dead. In whose memory we may 
this oblation, and grant them, Lord, to pass from death unto life, which thou didst from this ages past to Pray, brethren, that this, my sacrifice to yours, may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May, may the Lord accept, accept the sacrifice of thy hands. To the praise and glory of his name, for our glory and the good of the Holy Church. We beseech thee, O Lord, merciful to regard these our relations, which we offer unto thee for the souls of thy servants and handmaids. The like as thou didst grant them grace to believe the Christian faith, so they may obtain of thee the reward of everlasting life.
We laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praise thee and save Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, Lenis Uncheri et Terra, Gloria Tua, Hosanna in excelsis, Benedictus, qui venit in nomine Domini, Hosanna in excelsis. Therefore, most merciful Father, we humbly pray thee to Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord. We ask now accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unlimited sacrifices. We offer them unto thee first for thy holy Catholic Church, that thou thou say to keep her in peace to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, yet with thy servant Francis our Lord. Stephen, our bishop, and all the faithful guardians of the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, thy servants and handmaids. This evening, especially this holy dispensary of the 16th, he was Jason and David, and all who are around us stand in faith is known unto thee, and their steadfastness manifest, on whose behalf we offer unto thee, or who themselves offer unto thee the sacrifice of praise, for themselves and for all who are theirs, for the redemption of their souls, for the hope of their health and well-being, and who offer their prayers unto thee, the eternal God, the living and true. United in one communion, we venerate the memory first of the glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ. Bless Joseph, her spouse, and is also of thy blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Thaddeus, Linus, Platus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, and Lawrence, Prasadimus, John and Paul, Thomas, and David. And of all thy sins, grant that by their merits and prayers, we may in all things be defended with the help of thy protection. We beseech thee then, O Lord, graciously to accept this oblation from us, thy servants, and from thy whole family. Order thou our days in thy peace, and bid us to be delivered from eternal damnation, and none in the fold of thy name. Thou saint, O God, we receive thee in all things to make this oblation blessed, <laughs> approved, and accept a perfect and worthy offer, that it may become for us the body and blood of thy dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. We redee quam pateretur archivit panum in sanctus and venerabilis manus to us. Et alabatis aquis in celo mante deum matrem sucum omnipotentem, tibi gratis agens, benedixi, fregi, benique discipuli suis dices, accipite et manutate es hoc omnes, hoc es edem corpus. Who is made, no, we get the turn in testament, who promotes and promotes the good and the remissionary of the world, 
ai copii scumpe, facerivis, mei cu mori, cu patrievis.
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord Jesus Christ, who said to the apostles, Peace, I be with you, my peace, I give unto you. Regard not our sins but the faith of thy church, and grant for her peace and unity according to thy will, who then is and reign with the Father and the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world, and Amen. 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 The peace of the Lord be always with you. And to with thy spirit. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. And therefore, let us keep the feast. On your stay, qui tollis peccat amundi, dona eis requiem. On your stay, qui tollis peccat amundi, Dona eis requiem. Alius Dei, qui tollis peccat amundi. Dona eis requiem sempiternam.